like, I don't even know. I don't even know. I had a breakup. Oh my gosh, I have so much to share. And I was sort of so ready to figure out what was next. Yeah, like July last year. This it took such a long time. So everything just was like, this is your new life. I finally get to say the words out loud. Well, now I'm recording, so now I have to figure out what to say. I've been out of practice. I haven't talked to the camera in so long. I feel very uncomfortable <laughs> and weird right now, but I have so much to tell you. Oh my God, so much. This video is going to be really long, so make sure you are comfortable, but I have updates. I have updates. I can share everything with you. I got my visa. I finally got my visa and I can tell you the whole story. And yeah, if you're new here, hi, my name is Rachel. I'm 33 years old and I am about to start a whole new life. And I am so excited about it. I've just been waiting around for the last six months for things to come together to process. And now I'm here and I can finally move forward. And the best part is I can finally talk about it. I can finally talk about it and tell you what's going on and what's happening. And I can get, come back to making YouTube videos again. So I'm really excited about that. I think I'm gonna start with the one thing that I know everybody wants to know, which is where am I moving to? Because I did say about six, no, eight months ago, I'm not moving back to Toronto. In fact, I'm not moving back to Canada at all. And I feel so weird saying that out loud, but I'm actually moving to the United States, which is crazy. I never really thought that that would be my path, but here we are. And more specifically, I am moving to Washington DC and I cannot believe that I'm actually saying this out loud. I feel so weird right now because I have played this video over in my head a million times. And today, March, what is it, March 21st here in Australia, I finally get to say the words out loud, I'm moving to Washington DC. Like, I don't even know, I don't even know. Okay, so I'm here, I'm here and I'm sharing that. And I know that's very, very out of left field. I know most people thought that I was moving back to Canada and I'm not. So now I have a really, really long story to explain how I got here and then what's happening next. So I'm just gonna take it back a little bit. And also if you're new here, I will explain that, you know, in a little bit more detail than I normally would. So um, I lived in, a, like I'm Australian. I was born here in Australia and I lived here until age 29. I had a breakup when I was 29. And I always said, if that relationship ended, I was going to go over to Toronto and spend time there with one of my friends. And so I did that. And I was meant to go for about two months and I loved it so much. I ended up staying four or five months and I started the visa process to be able to live in Toronto. I went for a working holiday visa, which as an Australian, Australian is very, very easy to get if you are under the age of 35. As an Australian, they basically approve you almost instantly. There's an unlimited amount of Australian visas each year. So very, very easy process and pretty inexpensive too. I think it was only a couple of hundred dollars to do that visa. And then in the beginning of 2020, I came back to Australia and then the world shut down. So I actually had to wait almost a year for that visa to be approved. And it was finally approved in January, 2021. And then not long after that, I was able to move over to Toronto. So I got a two year working holiday visa and I moved to Toronto beginning of 2021. And then towards the end of 2022, as the end of my two year visa is approaching, um, one of my friends, Bronwyn, when, who lives in Austin, Texas, asked me to house sit for her in March, 2023. And that kind of made me start to think that maybe I should just take a couple of months to travel around because once my Canadian visa ended, that was it. I wasn't going to be able to actually stay in Canada or move back to Canada unless I was to completely change careers. And that's not something that I was really interested in. And unfortunately, I knew that from the day that I applied for the working holiday visa, I knew that my time in Toronto would be just a two year visa unless I really changed careers and decided to move down a different path. So it was limited, but it was fun. It was the best time ever. And then I didn't know what to do at the end of 2022. I wasn't quite ready to move back to Melbourne. And then I also didn't know where else maybe I wanted to live. Like, did I want to live in a different country? Did I want to, you know, figure that out? So I thought, why not just travel around for a little bit, visit a few different places and just see where life takes me and see if I get inspired to maybe want to live somewhere else in the world or whether I pack it all up and I come back to Melbourne. So that was end of 2022. So yeah, end of 2022, I'm packing up my apartment. I put 
all my things in storage in Toronto and everything is still in storage and I like that's a whole thing we'll get to eventually because I have to empty my storage locker but um, everything went, went into storage and then I came back to Australia in December 2022 and then I was here for about three months I was just living with my brothers which was amazing I actually hadn't lived with them since like maybe 10 years ago, I think, since I'm my early 20s. So it was really nice to spend some time with my brothers and live with them. And then I went to Japan at the beginning of March, 2023, which is basically a year ago. I went to Japan and had just a couple week like holiday there. And then from Japan, I went to Austin, Texas. And there's another video that I uploaded a few weeks ago where I explained some more of this in length. And I'll have that link down below if you want to know more about that. But when I was in Austin, it was the best thing that I have ever done. I completely isolated myself. I didn't go anywhere. I didn't do anything. I just, I don't know, lived my quiet little life of go getting groceries and running errands and making my YouTube videos. And I just, I feel like I finally worked through some stuff that had just been weighing me down. And I came out of Austin being a totally different version of myself. And I was sort of so ready to figure out what was next. You know, where was I gonna live? What was gonna be the next place that I go to? Or, or do I go back to Melbourne, you know? Anyway, while I was in Austin, um, one of my friends who is a lawyer actually messaged me and said, hey, I think there's a visa that you might be eligible for for the United States. So the first idea was maybe I do that visa and then I move to Austin because it's kind of close to <laughs> Toronto. It's not that close really, it's pretty far, but it's closer than Australia. And I figured maybe the United States was another option because I love North America. And if I can't go back to Canada, at least if I'm in the States, it's very easy for me to visit and go back to Toronto to visit all my friends and things like that. So uh, that was the next, idea. I was like, okay, maybe I move to Austin, Texas because I love it there. And do not be surprised if I ever end up in Austin because it is just, I love it there. It's so great. And I love that Bronwyn's there and I will be going back to visit like as soon as I can really, hopefully not too long after I get settled. That was sort of plan A, I guess. Yeah, we'll call that plan A. That was plan A that um, I came up with. And also I'm starting to feel like I'm losing my train of thought. So I hope everything I've said so far makes sense. I feel like I've jumped a little bit here there but I'm trying to keep it linear so at this point we are up to about a year ago March April May 2023 and so that was kind of the plan then I was gonna go back to Toronto and then just visit my friends go through some stuff in my storage locker and then I actually originally was planning to go to Europe I was gonna go and spend about a month in Nice I think that was what I was looking into because I'd, I'd been learning French I haven't touched it in like six months but I, it is a language that I am trying to learn when I can and can remember to do it and I just thought, you know what, probably being in France would be really good for me. And then I thought I could just travel around a little bit and again, see what happens, see if there's a place that I'm drawn to and see where I end up. That didn't really happen because a week after I got back to Toronto, <laughs> and I talked about this in my other video, I realized that with one of my friends, I was like, oh, I think there's a thing here. And then we start dating and it was um, unexpected. We've been friends for, well, at that point, we'd been friends for a year. We've now known each other for two years. We met St. Patrick's Day, 2022. So it's been two years and three days that we've known each other. And yeah, now I've just lost my train of thought. Where are we? Back to the story. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Where was I? Oh yeah, right. So I get back to Toronto and we start dating. And one of the things, oh right, you know what? I actually should probably explain. Um, my boyfriend is Canadian. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I have so much to share. So my boyfriend is Canadian, but he lives in the US and he's actually not from Toronto. So he moved to Toronto and then I met him and I knew from the day that I met him that his time in Toronto was always gonna be temporary because he was waiting for his visa to be able to move back to the United States. So I've known for the two years that I've known him that this was his plan. So when we started dating, it wasn't like I was blindsided or it was unexpected he was moving to DC, like I knew. So unfortunately, not long after we start dating, he moves. And it's kind of like, damn it, why couldn't we just like start dating a year ago? And like, this would be so different. But um, so yeah, we almost went into a long distance relationship straight away. And then it was in July last year, July, 2023, that I went to DC for the first time. And I did share this on my Instagram. I took some pictures and shared it all because I went and did a lot of the touristy stuff. You know, he took me around and showed me all of these places and things. And I had the best time. I got to meet a bunch of his friends and just meet a bunch of people and then just go sightseeing and it was really cool. And then at some point, and I don't remember exactly when, 
but we were talking about, you know, a relationship with us and like we knew that it was going to be long distance and we knew that I would probably move to the US and it was kind of a really big relationship investment. So we we knew that right at the very beginning and then like the timing of everything is just so strange. Like it just, it all just kind of fell into place. And I was like, oh, well actually there is this visa that I'm looking in, at doing. And I was thinking of moving to Austin and we thought maybe I could move to Austin and do long distance for a little bit between Austin and DC. Cause obviously that's a lot closer than Australia and DC kind of thing. So we thought that would be an all right plan. And then as time went on, it ended up just changing to me, just moving straight to DC. Like if I'm gonna be moving to a whole new country, why not just move straight there kind of Thing. So that kind of changed and I feel like I'm losing track of where I was again. So we're July last year, I go to DC, we talk about this and then I actually um, have a meeting with some lawyers to start discussing like whether I'm eligible for this visa. They determined that I was eligible. So I started the visa process. Yeah, like July last year, This it took such a long time. Um, I didn't actually get a lot of the stuff for my visa until I was back in Australia because I needed to go through documents and things that I had here. So anyway, after that, I go back to Toronto for a bit and then I went back to DC in August and I spent my birthday there and oh my God, it was the best. And then I went back to Toronto again just because I wanted to spend a little bit more time with my Toronto friends because I knew that when I went back to Australia, I wasn't gonna be going back for a really long time. So I went back to spend some time with my Toronto friends. I also wanted to just like do some stuff with my storage locker and make sure I was, you know, getting everything I needed because at that point I had no idea how long I was gonna be away for. So I just wanted to make sure I could get as much stuff for all seasons and places as possible and then in September I went back to DC again and then from DC I flew back to Sydney and then in Sydney well from Sydney I went to my cousin's wedding and then from there I went back to my mom's house and then I was staying at my mom's house until November when I came back to Melbourne for three and a half weeks and then I went back to my mom's house and I've been there ever since and now I've been back in Melbourne for two weeks. So that is the timeline of everything and how I got here. <laughs> so it's all been a little bit crazy for the last eight months. Everything just was like, this is your new life. This is now the path that you're gonna take. And so um, my visa took me such a long time to collect all of the documents and everything for. It's a petition based visa. So basically I have to collect all this stuff to show them all of my uh, career achievements and be like, here, am I good enough? And you just kind of have to sit there and wait and hope that they determine that you are good enough and that they accept you. And this morning I got approved and it's just, it's so exciting. For months now, I have been trying to figure out how I would go about making this video and sharing the whole story. And I, I bet I've missed something that I'm going to have to come back to. But anyway, I've, I've spent so long trying to figure out how I was going to share this. I thought maybe I could like set up my camera and I could get my reaction to getting my visa with you and like share that with you. And that didn't happen because I was totally like not expecting it this morning. And the way I found out was I was actually on FaceTime with my boyfriend this morning and I was chatting to the lawyers yesterday about just like some updates and everything. So I was on FaceTime to him this morning and I was like, oh, just let me pull up my email and I will read to you what the lawyer said yesterday. Anyway, I had a terrible sleep last night. I kept having nightmares and I kept waking up every few hours. And because the lawyers that I worked with are located in New York, it's on the complete opposite time. So they're working while I'm sleeping. And so every time I wake up in the middle of the night, I check my phone just in case. I have an email from this lawyer and I have like seven emails in my Gmail account. So I constantly have Gmail notifications. And so I would always specifically look for this lawyer's name. And I remember waking up like three times last night and I checked every time and I was like, oh, I can't see their name, so whatever. So I get up in the morning and I continue on with my morning and then I call my boyfriend and then I go, okay, let's like, I'll read you the email. So I, I have him on FaceTime on my phone. I have my laptop in front of me. I open the email and I am looking, about to click on the email thread to read to him what they said. And then I realized there was another email from a different lawyer and that's when I got the email saying congratulations you've got your visa and so I was about to tell him the story that I just told you of like oh I was gonna tell you this but I just found this email and I couldn't even get the words out I just put my hands in my like my head in my hands and I just started 
crying and he's like what's wrong and I'm like I got approved and he's like you what and I'm like I got approved and he's like oh my god he's like I don't even have any champagne he's like I need to crack something so we went and got a beer and like cracked the beer in celebration but I just was crying and I was like I was trying to explain to him about this other email and I was like well I don't even have to explain the other email now because we have the approval and everything's you know great so as as much as I couldn't share that reaction with you because I was it, I wasn't expecting it and I didn't realize I'd had the email for like five hours at this point. I got to have like a really nice little intimate moment of actually genuinely finding out in a completely surprising way with him. So that was kind of nice. Yeah, so that's how I found out this morning. And then I said to him, I just, I feel like a spaghetti noodle. I just, there's no tension left in my body because there's no wondering if, am I gonna get approved? Am I gonna get denied? There's no wondering, I got approved. And so that was really, really sweet way to find out this morning. And oh my God, it is just like a weight off my shoulders because I can finally tell you. And you know, that's part of why I couldn't tell you because I'm not moving back to Canada. And I, kn I know how stupid that sounds because for so long I, everybody's like you're just moving back to Canada why can't you talk about it I'm like because I'm not actually moving back to Canada and I've been advised not to talk about it I guess you know they just want to keep things private they say that it's not um, wise to go and splash your intentions all over the internet it's just you know it's personal private governmental documents and things and it's just a process that should be kept away from the internet until things have gone through. So that's why I couldn't talk about it because I wasn't actually going back to Canada. It was a whole new country, a whole new thing and a visa that's, you know, based on my entire career. It's just a little complicated. So I was like, okay, I just have to sit around. And then that's why I stopped making videos about a month ago because I was like, I am so sick of just talking about nothing and not being able to actually share with you what's going on. And so it's been a nice break. I've managed to get a lot of other things done in that time, which has been super helpful helpful and I've just yeah sort of taken like a little bit of a vacation sort of like mentally reset before everything gets crazy and I'm gonna have to start like running around trying to get everything sorted so that's how I found out this morning that kind of brings me up until right now in this moment what's next involves basically there's a bunch of documents that we're waiting to arrive and that could take like a week or so I don't know when those documents will arrive then you have to go through an interview process they have to take your passport then you get your passport back then you have your visa then you can leave so I'm still probably a few weeks away from being able to actually get on a plane but the main thing is that I got approved and I can talk about it and I can tell you what's going on so oh, this is just like so nice so that's weight off my shoulders. I'm just trying to think what else I wanted to talk about. So that's kind of the story. That's how I found out. That's what's happening next. Well, obviously then once I go back to DC, I have to go back to Toronto at some point, which I'm so excited about. We're so ready to be able to plan going back to, D uh, to Toronto and seeing all of our friends. This is just going to be the best. I don't know how long I'm going to go back to Toronto for, maybe a couple weeks. I just really want to see my friend Liz and just catch up with everybody and, you know, empty my storage locker. So then that's the next thing is we're going to empty my storage locker and we will road trip from Toronto down to DC. It's about an eight to 10 hour drive. And I would assume with all of my stuff and probably a U-Haul or something like that, it's gonna take a little bit longer. So it's gonna be a really, really long day, but it's gonna be a really fun road trip. I'm so excited. I'm gonna vlog it. We're gonna go on a road trip, taking all of my things down to DC. And then, oh my God, there's just everything else, like apartment hunting, all the things that I get to do in setting up and organizing my space. I finally get to go back to having a solid routine and I'm so excited about it. It has been over a year since I've had my own space. It's been, what, end of November 2022. So November, December, January, February, March. That's 16 months at this point. By the time I actually get around to, you know, settling in, it's probably gonna be a year and a half since I've had my own space, which is crazy. I will never do that again. The whole traveling around at the beginning of last year to try and figure out where I wanted to live or what I wanted to do with my life. Do I move back to Melbourne? Do I move overseas? Not, a, not ideal. I did not like that at all. That was uncomfortable. I have not enjoyed any of this. I will never do that again. I need a home. I need a base. I need something that's mine in my space. Anyway, I learned my lesson. We'll never do that again. But yeah, so it's been a year and a half-ish since I've had my own place. And it's been six months now of just living in limbo, waiting for an answer, unable to do anything because I wasn't allowed to visit. That's the other thing. I wasn't allowed to visit. And unfortunately with like time off and you know, my boyfriend works and everything, he was only able to maybe come out here for a week. And I 
just said it's not worth it. It's not worth traveling that far for a week. If you're gonna come to Australia, like try to coordinate it so that it is like two to three weeks. It's just way too far. So next Christmas we will come back and we will organize a proper lengthy time to come back. Yeah, so I'm moving to DC. <laughs> it's so weird to say out loud. <laughs> I think that's pretty much the whole story. I'm sure I've forgotten something. If you have any questions, please let me know because I will obviously answer them in the upcoming videos because I'm sure there's a million questions about this whole thing because it's very um, unexpected. I think only, I, I did ask people to guess on a video I made eight months ago and only two people guessed that I was moving to DC. Everybody thought it was somewhere else in Canada. Other people thought maybe somewhere in Europe but it's DC and um, it's just so weird to say out loud now, like I'm moving to DC. I really, really like DC. I think it is adorable. They have um, a height limit on buildings there. So all the buildings can be no higher than 130 feet, 160 feet in one area. And so it means like all of the buildings are about the same height. It's about 13 stories and a lot of buildings there because it is so hot in summer and it is hot from like 8 a.m. until like 10 p.m. It's really gross to be honest with you but because it's so hot most buildings have like rooftop pools and they all sort of have a view and it's just beautiful and like the architecture is stunning. It's very French in a lot of areas. The row homes are stunning. Georgetown is so cute. I'm oh my god I cannot wait. I cannot wait to like take you and show you all of these places. If you have any recommendations please let me know because I have a whole new city to explore and yeah, in my time that I was there. So the very first time I went, I just explored DC. And then the second time I went, oh my gosh, there's so much that I haven't told you. Oh, this is like, <laughs> like this is a lot. So the second time I went, which was in August, we actually did a night out in Annapolis, which is a little naval town and it is adorable. It is so cute. Actually the picture that is the cover photo of the reel on my Instagram, that was the summary of 2023 reel that photo of us was taken in Annapolis. But we went out, we stayed in this really beautiful little colonial hotel. I have a bunch of pictures, so I'll just put them here so you can see them. And then we went out for some drinks, I think. And then we walked over the bridge and ended up going to this really beautiful restaurant that's like in an old converted boat shed. And oh my goodness, the sun was setting. A boat was just sailing down the river. Like it was perfect. It was amazing. I love Annapolis. I really, really want to go back because it's just the cutest town. And you could see all the, the people in their navy uniforms, like the crisp white little uniforms with their hats. It was just so cool. And then the next day after that, we went on a little adventure and I now have a bucket list item. So we went for a drive to some little park area and you could see across the water, which is the Chesapeake Bay. And there was this really giant bridge off in the distance. And we're like, we should drive over that bridge. So we drive over the bridge. It's like a six kilometer long bridge across the Chesapeake Bay to the other side. And then we went to Target and got ice cream and came home. But now I really, really want to do the Chesapeake Bay Bay Bridge Tunnel, which is like half bridge, half tunnel. And it's like 25 kilometers long. It's so fascinating to me. And I really want to drive along there. So at some point I'm going to do that. And then I, I haven't been out to Delaware and I would like to go out to Delaware, but that was really cool. And then that same trip, we also did a, like a quick day trip down to Charlottesville in Virginia, but we were just having lunch with some family friends. So we didn't really get to explore Charlottesville because we had to get back for a birthday party that night. So didn't get to explore much down there, but I would like to go back. And then uh, when I went back in September, we went out to a little town called uh, Berkeley Springs in West Virginia. And it was a Adorable. It was so cute. We stayed in this little bed and breakfast up in the, the bush and there was a wedding there that weekend So it was really cute. We went for a hike up one of the mountains one of the days, which was fabulous We um, got up at like 6 a.m. To drive around to some of the lookouts Although they weren't like the best viewpoints, but it was still beautiful We went to the day spa there and we had like massages and just like it was so cute There's nothing better than going on little day trips or weekend trips to explore small towns. It is my favorite thing in the whole world and DC has so many great little places around it to travel to. So that's what I'm really looking forward to the most is being able to just go and visit all of these little places. So if you have any suggestions of little towns or places to visit, please let me know. I loved it. I started to meet people and sort of, you know, make friends and get a feel for the city. 
and I really really like it there and I'm really excited about it it's gonna be a really interesting new chapter oh my gosh I'm so excited about finally having a space and being able to make cleaning videos and just doing my day-to-day -day life like I used to like I'm so excited about that and it's also kind of nice that I've skipped winter a little bit as much as I would have liked to be there months ago I kind of skipped winter and now I get to go in spring and I just feel like spring is you know a really nice time for new beginnings and it's a whole new beginning everything's changing you know my boyfriend and I had that conversation on the phone this morning we're like oh my god it's real it's real like everything is now it's gonna happen I'll, like ah oh, it's just it's happening and it's crazy I'm so excited about it, but I still don't know when I'm leaving, but it will be soon. So yeah, I think that's kind of the update. Oh, the other thing that makes me so excited about this, and this is so stupid, but um, when I was younger and I was really into like movies like Legally Blonde and all that. So in Legally Blonde 2, she goes to DC and there's this, this part in it where she like slams down the boot of the car and she's like, DC, here I come. And I'm just like, I get to use that now because that's me. I get to be like that. And then that entire scene actually, the whole part from where she gets in the car and then Paula is like, yeah, but isn't it kind of hard to plan the wedding of the century and change the law at the same time. And Elle is just like, Paulette, if I could teach Bruza how to shop online, I think I can handle Congress. And then she gets in the car and the song that plays is super motivational and inspirational. And then she gets to DC and then it plays like an Avril Lavigne song, which is also one of my favorite songs when I was a teenager, like obsessed. And there's just something about that whole scene in the Legally Blonde movie that was so inspiring and motivating to me as a kid. And it is so wild to me that like 15 years later, I am doing that and moving to DC because it was never a thing that I thought I would ever do and it's just really cool and I don't know I don't know why I told that story it's just something that's so silly but I really like it because that's how I felt when I was a teenager and now I'm like oh my god that's me I get to do that I get to do that I'm gonna be doing that so yeah that's my update I'm sure I've probably completely missed something but um, thanks for hanging out with me for the last uh, half an hour as I can tell but yeah oh my god I cannot believe I finally able to say it I'm finally able to tell you I don't know what to do I don't even know what to do with myself it took me half an hour this morning to go and get a coffee because I was just so like I don't I don't know how to find keys because my brain isn't working right now because all I am thinking about is the fact that I have my visa and I don't know what to do with myself so yeah anyway anyway okay back on track questions if you have any questions please let me know I'm sure there's a million uh, I will answer them like in the next couple of videos and things um, I'm really hoping I haven't forgot anything. I'm sure I probably have, but yeah, I'll pick up in another video, but that's the update. That's the crazy update. Oh, and yes, if you want to know more of sort of about our relationship and how we met and how that happened, I have more detail of that in another video that I'll have linked down below. Yeah, I'm moving to DC and I have a whole new adventure ahead of me and there's going to be so many videos and I'm so excited about it and I'm so excited for you to come on this journey with me. Also, before I go, it's very, very important for me to say thank you for everyone who's been so patient with me over the last month or so um, and not uploading. I know it's been a very, very annoying for some of you because I know you really missed my videos. And I am really thankful that you're here and that you watch my videos and you support me and my channel and that, you know, a part of my job and my career because without you, I wouldn't have been able to do this and have this visa because it is based on my job and and everything that I have here and I just I wouldn't be able to do it without you and so I'm very thankful for all of your support over the years to be able to help me get to this point so thank you for being here thank you for being patient with me and I hope you're as excited as I am for this whole new adventure and journey and oh my god I have to learn a whole new country and system which <sighs> It's a lot. I had moments where I was like, I don't have the energy. I don't know how I'm gonna figure this out. I gotta go and get a tax number, like a, what do they call it? A social security number. I'm like, I gotta go and open a bank account. I gotta figure out a whole new banking system. I gotta figure out all these things, which I've done it before, but it's a lot. <laughs> and I'm like, I gotta do it all again. But I'm so excited and I can't wait. So yeah, thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for being here. But oh my God, guys, we're moving to DC. Mm -hmm.